Back in 2014, Nathan Fielder invented Dumb Starbucks, with the sole intention of exploiting Parody Law to steal a brand so that he can entertain us for his docu-comedy series, Nathan For You. Yet, here's what everyone else thought of Dumb Starbucks while it was still in operation. There's absolutely artistic value here. To me, this is this is a protest. This is a protest against the big fish. There's a rumor that it might be Banksy. Something tied to an art installation, maybe this is Banksy. Blowing Dumb Starbucks way out of proportion and inflating it to be something more than it was. So when I started writing this analysis on the rehearsal, I was, and still am, really hoping that I'm not grossly misinterpreting everything like everyone at the dumb Starbucks rally, but I can only dream. Let's overanalyze the rehearsal, shall we? During season three, episode four of Nathan's previous show, Nathan For You, you know, the show that we were just talking about earlier, Nathan has this interaction with some drunk guy that he's trying to scam. What's your favorite movie? Inception. Inception? Nathan Fielder's favorite movie being Inception explains a lot about the inspiration behind this madhouse of a show called The Rehearsal, especially episode four, The Fielder Method. But we'll talk more about that episode in a second. Nathan Fielder, certified Christopher Nolan fanboy, decided to create a docu-comedy series about rehearsing normal, mundane things in life, like confessing a secret to a friend, hosting an acting class, or raising a child. Going as far as building these sets for his test subjects to rehearse in, and using specialized flowchart software to chart the optimal path for their future encounter, meticulously planning out every single scenario and highlighting every milestone of their conversation. The rehearsal just seems to be one big depiction of our internal thoughts, specifically representing how someone's anxiety can make them overthink a future situation so much that it becomes a bigger deal than it actually is. Even though Nathan Fielder is an alleged sociopath channeling the powers of Satan, I feel like this show does a really good job of capturing this aspect of the human condition. Nathan's meticulous flowchart methods, building large-scale replicas of the real locations, and hiring actors to play the real people may seem ridiculous in real life, but Nathan is wasting HBO's money to simulate what we do in our own heads. In fact, Korski even makes the comparison that Nathan is Willy Wonka, bringing Charlie Bucket, aka Korski's dreams, or in this case his imagination, to life. Speaking of Korski, we start the show off with Korski, a trivia enthusiast who's worried that his trivia night friend group will reject him because he lied about having a master's degree for the past 12 years. Core assumed that if Trisha, specifically Trisha over here, discovered that Core was lying about his master's degree, there would be a good chance that she would get violent. This violent reaction would consist of name calling and saying things that are so unforgivable that he can no longer be friends with her. But when Core finally tells Trisha, she ends up being so calm and understanding about receiving this new piece of information. The same exact thing happened with Nathan when he wanted to confront Angela about not taking the experience seriously. During Nathan's rehearsal with fake Angela, their conversation devolved into shouting and throwing objects. This is all mirroring how someone can calculate the worst case scenario in their head, and it all begins with that good old habit of self-deprecation and self-doubt. Like Core, Nathan is overthinking the situation and expecting it to get violent, but when Nathan actually confronts real Angela, she calmly expresses her concerns, states that she wants to opt out of the whole thing and then politely thanks Nathan for the whole experience. Once again, they made a bigger deal out of it than it actually was. Like how the main reason Nathan went through inception levels of the fielder method was because he was insecure about his ability to teach a class. And this level of overthinking isn't just presented through Nathan or Cor. Take Angela, for example. She's a 44-year-old woman who has put off having children her entire life because the circumstances were never right. But going back to rehearsing future encounters, I was absolutely floored when the employees who was supposed to be a night owl and operating the fake baby all night kept falling asleep. Nathan said it would be negligent if he didn't fix the problem, so Nathan sits down and immediately talks to the guy, you know, without rehearsing. And guess what? The problem is solved and the whole operation of the show is able to continue on, specifically continuing on with a show that is encouraging the opposite of what Nathan just did. So it's fitting that we never actually see the full conversation of Nathan confronting him. It didn't matter how how long Nathan or the other actors studied the person that they're portraying. Because in Nathan's words, the last step of understanding someone is always just a guess. So early on, it's established that the rehearsal is pointless. Nathan is wasting so much time, resources, and energy preparing for things that they didn't really need to prepare for. Just like in Nathan For You, Nathan's methods are counterintuitive and contribute to nothing. And just like Nathan For You, the rehearsal was never supposed to work. It was just meant to show a dark reflection of those who participated 
interested in it. Patrick's brother claims that Patrick's current girlfriend, Nessa, is a gold digger. So what does Nathan do? He puts Patrick in the same situation that they're rehearsing. Nathan sends Patrick on a trip with his fake brother's fake dad to locate buried gold. Then the fake dad dies and leaves the gold with Patrick. Patrick refuses to give the gold to his fake brother, putting Patrick in the shoes of his real-life brother, while at the same time making him a literal gold digger. As a kid, Angela rebelled against her parents as she turned to more self-destructive behaviors fueled by drugs and alcohol. So what does Nathan do? He gives her a self-destructive son that repeats her past mistakes. Angela was hellbent on maintaining an only Christian household, and refused to take on Nathan's offer of raising the kids with both of their religions. So when it came to raising Adam as a Christian, Nathan admits to being a pushover and conforming to what his partner wants, avoiding any possible confrontation. And Nathan's mom even calls him out for it, claiming that it's easier for him to go along with things rather than dealing with the tension. Even though the one thing Angela wanted to do from the beginning was have better communication between her and Nathan. So instead of working on a way to meet his fake partner halfway on this issue, Nathan goes on to secretly teach his son Judaism in the basement, specifically the story about the Maccabees, who were a group of Jewish rebels established after Antiochus, their king at the time, outlawed the practice of Judaism. They would go on to take Judea out of the hands of the Seleucid Empire. So in this case, Nathan is comparing his fake wife to the tyrant of the Seleucid Empire. And it doesn't stop there, after he goes on to name the episode after Apocalypto. Miriam tells Nathan to stand up for himself, but instead of following her advice, Nathan brings Miriam back to the house so that she can fight his battles for him. I love the fact that the rehearsal was supposed to be Nathan facilitating this whole experience, but then Nathan ends up putting himself in the middle of this project to the point where the narrative becomes completely about him. In the first episode, Nathan claims that one could easily get lost in the fake reality that he's creating. And throughout the series, we grow aware of how Nathan is envious of other people who can easily believe and immerse themselves in these fake worlds with such little effort. I think this shot of Nathan turning over the green bell pepper that had a sticker on it perfectly symbolizes Nathan's separation from reality and descent into madness. Nathan begins to immerse himself in this role and begins his journey to believe in that fake narrative. Throughout the rest of the show, Nathan progressively becomes further detached from reality as he is consumed by the rehearsal. And that's why the show emphasizes people like Angela telling Nathan to come back to reality. Not everything is make-believe. Some things are real. You have to open your eyes to reality. During Nathan's fight with fake Angela, she tells Nathan that no matter how hard he tries, he'll never feel something real. Under Nathan's direction, this was clearly meant to represent the over-exaggerated toxic inner monologue of someone with doubts and insecurities, just like what we've seen Core experience earlier in the series. No master's degree? This guy is such a fraud. And the loser of tonight's trivia is... Core Skeet. Bringing us to Remy. Can we get an F in the chat for Remy's grandmother over here? This is her tweet before the show's premiere. After Angela leaves Nathan, the show heads in a different direction, going from this fixation on future events to this fixation on the past. The rehearsals were meant to represent anxieties about the future, while the reenactments were representing anxieties about the past. Nathan spends most of this series in this fake house, and when entering Remy's home, he claims that nothing was by design, yet still considered it to be a work of art, seeing the beauty and the chaos and the unstructured nature of real life. Nathan made it seem like him seeing this unstructured environment after an astronomical amount of simulated situations was almost like a breath of fresh air to him. But then this moment of realization is interrupted when Remy calls Nathan daddy. Hey. Dragging Nathan back into this delusional world of imagination. Remy mistakes Nathan for his actual father. So Nathan ends up trying to solve this situation, and he becomes fixated on Remy. When looking back on what he could have done differently with Remy, Amber claims that she just knows that Remy will be okay, claiming that it's something she intuitively feels as a parent, and that Nathan will understand when he becomes a parent himself. But instead of just taking her advice or waiting to experience the miracle of parenting later in life, Nathan uses the Fielder method to become Amber and recreate the past memories of her life. Earlier in the video, I was talking about how Kor compared Nathan to Willy Wonka, emphasizing the point that Nathan is making his own imagination and the imagination of others become reality. Willy Wonka is definitely a film Nathan takes inspiration from, as he ends up using the song Pure Imagination from the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory at the end of episode 1. Throughout the rehearsal, Nathan had everyone break character 
after multiple times, telling us that he wasn't fully committed to the immersion. But then, it happens. Nathan becomes daddy. At exactly 30 minutes and 23 seconds into season 1 episode 6, Pretend Daddy, fake Amber comes to this conclusion. Life's better with surprises. I mean, some things you want to be prepared for, but... You know what I mean. Which is really the lesson of the rehearsal, and supporting everything that I said earlier, that Nathan's ineffectual methods are not worth it. They're only there to simply prove that we shouldn't fixate and overthink everything. It's good to prepare, but to a reasonable degree, and that life is way better when you don't waste your time, energy, or resources worrying about things that will probably never happen. But then fake Amber makes this mistake of saying to fake Remy that she is his father. Because I'm your dad. This is where fake Amber reverts back to Nathan, and Nathan doubles down on what he said, that he is Remy's dad. No. I'm your dad. Finally, Nathan doesn't break character. He fully immerses himself in the world of pure imagination, completely disregarding anything logical that he just said about the rehearsal not being a good idea. Nathan now views the role of fake Remy's dad the same way that real Remy viewed Nathan as his father. And to top it all off, this shot of Nathan hugging fake Remy at the end perfectly matches this shot from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory of Willy Wonka hugging Charlie Bucket. So that was my understanding of the rehearsal. Hopefully you found it insightful. It looks like we're getting a season two. HBO just announced that. I can't tell if I'm more excited or disturbed by that news. Anyway, thanks for watching.